Um, hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, February monthly meeting uh, for Visual Arts Guild of Frisco. Yay! Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, please feel free as we go through the evening to go back and uh, get all of that stuff in your bellies so that we don't have to um, carry it back home. Uh, we have some snacks, we have some wine, uh, lemonade, water, some other stuff. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's yummy. Uh, none of it is healthy, I don't think. Uh, somebody was asking about healthy choices. I don't think we have any. Uh, but that's, uh, that's the good stuff, right? That's, uh, that's fine. Um, okay, so uh, before I introduce uh, my, uh, uh, my good friend Jeb over here, who's going to be our speaker, uh, I want to go through a couple of other things. Uh, if you're uh, at the VAGF monthly meeting for the first time ever, raise your hand. Nice. Nice, very nice. Six of you, I think, or five or six, yeah. Kind of like, oh. <laughs> yeah one of them. Thank you. Uh, so this is only the second in-person uh, meeting that we've had uh, since uh, February of 2020. Uh, right after that, we uh, we had um, a, a meeting uh, planned for March, uh, and like middle of March, we usually do it on a third Monday of the month, uh, and literally the the. Wednesday or Thursday before that Monday was the whole NBA canceled games and like everything kind of blew up. So we didn't have a, a meeting uh, that March and then all of the other meetings uh, were on Zoom. So we're, we're super happy as of last month, uh, we're in person. We are usually here uh, at the Gallery 8680. Uh, and Robin and Glenn are nice enough to, uh, to help us out with that. Uh, Robin is not here. Uh, but the, the two of them are so nice that, that we actually gave them a, an award last year uh, for, uh, for their service to Visual Arts Guild of Frisco. They've been awesome. Uh, as you can see, they have a lot of pieces from uh, their current uh, winter show uh, still up. So feel free to, uh, to look around. I believe um, in the front uh, atrium over there, uh, there's a list of um, uh, titles and artists so you can match it up with all these uh, numbers here, but there's some some spectacular art, uh, and I, I see and recognize uh, some of the VHF members as well. So that's that's always fun. We always have uh, cool collabs uh, here. Uh, their uh, website and social media is uh, the Gallery 8680. Uh, if you didn't know, uh, it's named so because their address here is 8680 Main Street. <laughs> I always tell people that. It's called 8680 because that's that's what the address is. It's easy to find right across the street from the safety town or the main uh, fire station over there. Um, so uh, I do have a couple of things uh, to, to put on your calendars. Uh, our Fresh Start show is going to start uh, literally next week. Uh, for those of you who were accepted, who's accepted in the show? All right, nice. Okay, so all those artists uh, will have their pieces in the show, and uh, they are bringing those uh, pieces this Sunday, 11 to 1, at the Frisco Discovery Center. And then a couple of days after that, uh, the staff over there will, will uh, put all the show, uh, all the uh, pieces in the show uh, in the atrium of the Frisco Discovery Center. So I think uh, by the time Wednesday rolls around, it'll be like officially open. Uh, our reception, artist reception, is going to be on March 13th. That's a Sunday, uh, so like four we three weeks uh, from yesterday. Uh, March 13th, 6.30 to 8-ish, uh, 8.30. Uh, we will have award presentations in several categories. And uh, our jurors will be uh, Dr. Valerie and Emmanuel Gillespie. Uh, there are a, a couple who run uh, on an... Um, uh, an art gallery in uh, Carrollton called Pencil Pencil on Paper Gallery. Uh, fantastic gallery. I've, I've been there on a couple of occasions. Uh, I also encourage you to connect with them on Instagram and, and Facebook because they have uh, some really uh, cool exhibits over there. Um, and so they will be the main jurors uh, for our show. I thought it would be kind of cool to have a, a couple uh, be the main juror. Like, is it a plural or not? I don't know. Uh, so that'll be fun. And then uh, our special juror for the uh, Art That Speaks to Me Award is going to be um, Angelia Pelham. Uh, our, uh, I was going to say the newest, but I, no, yeah, she's still the newest uh, city council person uh, here in Frisco. 
Uh, there's currently a runoff election, uh, so we'll see who the, the next newest is. Uh, but Angelia has been uh, kind enough to agree uh, to help us out. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, we always pick a community figure, um, uh, let's say a Frisco celebrity, uh, to help us out with that, uh, because we want them to not necessarily be in the world of art. Uh, so not like an art teacher, art professor, gallery owner, or somebody like that, somebody who just appreciates art. Um, and they pick an award um, with that we titled Art That Speaks to Me. Uh, and it's kind of what the, what the title says, whatever their favorite uh, piece in the show is, for whatever reason, um, you know, they get to uh, hand out that award. Uh, so we'll do all of that Sunday, March 13th, uh, at the Frisco Discovery Center just down the street. Um, and then a couple weeks after that, uh, we'll take all of that art out, um, and uh, then we'll have another show uh, in June, more on that later. Uh, we are also uh, planning uh, a couple of collaborations with some businesses, not just here in Frisco, but also in Dallas. Uh, we are in talks uh, with a Dallas um, art gallery uh, to do an artist pop-up at a gin distillery. How cool. Yeah, I thought some of you might like that. So we'll uh, <laughs> uh, keep, uh, keep your eyes posted for some of the announcements uh, once we figure out the dates and the logistics about that. It'll be sometime in May, um, but, uh, but that'll, be a, that'll be a cool event. We'll, we'll invite a bunch of people and uh, that'll be cool. Uh, I think that's about it. One other thing that I uh, wanted to mention is uh, our next monthly meeting we, uh, we haven't secured the location yet. This location is not available on the third Monday, so we'll, uh, the, the location will be TBD. Uh, but uh, our speaker will be Brad Sharp, who is sitting right over there. Wave, Sharp. There you go. Yeah. Uh, I always thought that uh, um, the name Brad Sharp is a cool name for a photographer, right? You want your <laughs> photographer to be named Sharp. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, listen to him. Uh, in March and then in April, we'll have uh, Chris Miller, uh, who wrote a book uh, called Spiritual Artist. Uh, so he'll be, uh, he'll be talking about that. He spoke to the, a number of groups, um, uh, art groups here uh, in the DFW area, uh, like I said, released the book. And, uh, so look for all of that information uh, pretty, uh, pretty soon. One last thing that I wanna mention is uh, our newest partnership uh, with the Sweetwaters coffee shop that's opening in Frisco. So now uh, you now we'll have a, a one in actually in Frisco. There's one in McKinney. It's on Custer, so it's just on the wrong side of the street. Uh, and then we have one on five, uh, 423, uh, technically in Little Elm because it's on the wrong side of the street the other way. Um, so they're you know they're both kind of Frisco, but not really. Uh, this one is Frisco proper. It's on Preston Road. If you go north of El Dorado, like about a half a mile, where the new uh, UNT uh, Frisco campus is being built, uh, right on the east side of, of uh, Preston Road. Uh, so uh, we we've had a couple of artists already involved uh, with that. Amanda uh, made a little. Uh, uh, a drawing, chalk drawing of a tiger uh, for their uh, Year of the Tiger kind of welcome sign over there. Amanda, wave. Okay. Uh, we have uh, Lucy, who I don't see here. Um, she's not here. She uh, drew the, uh, she uh, uh, oh, drew, right? Chalk. She used chalk to draw the, uh, the dragon on the big wall in the back of the uh, uh, store. And uh, Amanda and myself, we have some uh, art uh, along the walls. Uh, right now, and then we'll we'll kind of uh, periodically cycle through uh, different uh, artists or different themes, and we'll we'll kind of uh, have some announcements uh, for that. It's a, uh, I think they said it's an 80 foot wall, um, and I think right now there are about a dozen, maybe a little bit more uh, pieces in there. So depending on size, we could have anywhere between 10 to 20 uh, pieces. Um, in like a little mini show uh, over there. So we'll, we'll start working on those. Uh, they've already been uh, very generous uh, with their support of BAGF. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. I think that was all on my list, except uh, to have uh, our newest board members uh, wave. So I'll go kind of around the room. We have Zahra Jahanifard over here. She's our new uh, Director of Community Outreach. Uh, we have Lily Meneses. Did I get that right? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, she's our new Director of Membership. Um, 
the one who's uh, near and dear to my heart, uh, Jennifer Looney over there. Uh, she's our director of finance. Uh, checked you in, uh, Holly Reeder over there, our new director of events. Uh, our vice president, Kalika Antal. Our communications director, Heidi Kidd. And, uh, not to be forgotten, our newest director of development, Kevin Westerfield over here. Yeah, so we're super excited uh, about the new board. Everybody's excited and, you know, has uh, a lot of ideas, so look for all kinds of stuff uh, from us. Um, uh, I think that's about it. Uh, I, I think I went a bit longer than I, uh, than I wanted to. Uh, so I'll kind of uh, make a, a quick transition into uh, our um, uh, main speaker tonight. Uh, I see that some of you have uh, uh, got the memo about wearing uh, proper attire. Uh, so you know, a few of us have a t-shirt uh, that are designed uh, by uh, Tumbleweed Textiles, which is a local Frisco company here. You have their store just down the street over here. Uh, what you may not know is that uh, it was started by two Frisco ISD uh, teachers. And uh, Jeb, who is our speaker tonight, uh, is still teaching art at Liberty High School, right? Uh, so he'll kind of uh, go a little bit through that process. Uh, it, it is one of the uh, most beloved brands in Frisco, um, everybody's wearing these t-shirts. Uh, they're always helping the community. They, they recently have a, a, a had a, a big campaign for National Breast Cancer Foundation. Uh, they're just awesome, awesome people. Uh, come to their party, uh, Independence Day party on March 2nd. That's the Texas Independence Day for those of you who didn't know. It'll be down at the rail yard, uh, live music, all kinds of stuff. That's uh, Wednesday, I think, or Wednesday, yeah. Um, and, but before you do, you know, go over there, buy some more T-shirts because uh, you can never have uh, you can never have too many. Uh, so uh, Jeb is going to uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, what he does for a living and how he got there. Uh, so please help me welcome uh, Jeb Matulich. Thank you. way back, like 15 years ago. I don't know when it started, but I was a pretty early adopter, and I will say it's such a great organization. I met so many uh, really good friends through that that I still keep in touch with. Uh, of course, that was a, a while back, but uh, I think it's just a great organization, and I think if you think about Frisco being one of the fastest growing cities in the country, I think the potential uh, for the arts in Frisco is just, like, we haven't even touched the, the surface. I mean, so I think there's a lot of really great things ahead, and so I'm definitely looking to get more involved um, and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, great organization. Uh, really proud to be here, and thanks for having me, uh, first of all. All right, so let me find my clicker here. Howdy, I'm Jeff. <laughs> um, give me a quick little background just on kind of where I am right now. I'm 49 years old. Okay, I've lived in Frisco since 2000. Uh, I'm married, my wife Carrie back here. I have two uh, kids. I have a son that's a 19-year-old. He's at Texas Tech. He's a yep. freshman, and then I have a daughter that is a freshman at Reedy High School, uh, so they keep us busy uh, around the way. So just want to kind of lay that down. I'm also a high school art teacher at Liberty High School, like Swad said. I teach Art 1 and Advanced Art 1 uh, there. I've been at Liberty for 16 years. Uh, and then also I own co-own Tumbleweed Textiles, like uh, Swad uh, was mentioning. So tonight, basically kind of what I wanted to do is just kind of give you a little bit of background. Uh, kind of my art story, uh, kind of how things came to be, uh, and, and just kind of, you know, the story of my art career, my journey, I guess, because uh, it is a little unconventional uh, compared to some, but uh, maybe you'll get something out of it. Uh, we'll see. So, here we go. All right, so, get this going here. This is like school. Yeah, it worked in dress rehearsal. <laughs> 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 It 
Steven is the other side. Okay. Yeah. I think maybe you see the angle over there. We'll see. All right, so I draw Texas stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Drawing Texas can be hard. <laughs> Real hard. <laughs> um, this little project I did with some of my students uh, a few years ago. I said, hey, draw Texas, can't look at your phone or anything. These are some of my favorites. This one looks like a thumbs down, so. Uh, <laughs> that was really tough. So, yeah. I kind of, in a way, make my living drawing Texas stuff. So that's kind of you know what I wanted to kind of share today uh, with that. So a little bit of background about me. Uh, I'm a coach's son. Uh, my dad was a football coach growing up, so I went to like six elementary schools because he was always chasing that next job. Uh, so I lived in Texas uh, my entire life. Um, grew up all over the state. I can name off all different places that I lived in the panhandle in East Texas, uh, all over. But coach's kid, moved around a lot, and I think that's one of the reasons I kind of found that love for Texas because I actually lived in multiple regions of Texas. and so very familiar with Texas and as you can see in some of these pictures I'm always wearing you know some of the gear that my dad uh, some of his gear at whatever school he was uh, coaching at at that particular time uh, always had that gear but I found my love for art in second grade uh, we lived in Texarkana okay, which is on the border of Arkansas okay and I was second grade like I said what was that like seven years old or so I was just infatuated with the Houston Oilers and Earl Campbell and the Chargers, and I just love football so much. And so we had an art contest in second grade, and I won it, okay? And the picture that I drew was the Dallas Cowboys playing the Houston Oilers, and Earl Campbell was diving over the pile, and I drew the crowd and the scoreboard, and I, I mean, it was so detailed, this drawing that I did in second grade. And I won the contest, so I won the art contest in my second grade class. And then they took all the first place winners, and they put them up against each other for the whole second grade winner and I won that one so this was kind of like the first time I had that moment that was like oh wow this is something that I can do okay, my teachers are really like and this just kind of tells you like how important teachers are because I just remember my teachers going man Jeff you did so great you're, you're such a great artist and it just stuck with me so you know that's one thing that I keep in mind while I'm teaching it's just even those little words of encouragement and things that you say to kids uh, as you're teaching uh, can just basically <laughs> you know, mean the world to them. I mean, and carry on, I, I'm still talking about something that happened like in 1978. So it had a big impact on me. So I won the art contest and I wish I still had that photo, that picture, I'm sure it got lost in one of our moves, uh, but it was really cool, and I'm, I'm, you know. But anyway, Earl Campbell was my guy and he was kind of my, uh, the guy that I was looking at when I was uh, looking to do that. As I went through elementary school, still a huge sports fan. And so that's kind of where my art began, in sports art. So I would get Sports Illustrated every week, and I would draw pictures in Sports Illustrated. I got to where I could draw football helmets without looking, okay? Where the pads went and, and players, you know, the shorts, the Nikes, all the shoes, I could do all that kind of stuff. So I was always drawing from Sports Illustrated magazines. I was also into fighter jets, okay? At the time, we lived in Azle, Texas. Uh, I used to be over there where Carswell Air Force Base was. I was in fifth grade. Those planes would fly over our house all the time. I was just like loving it. The Thunderbirds, you know, the F-15s, the B-52s, I was drawing that stuff. And these are some of my actual artwork from when I was in fifth grade. Some of the planes that I used to draw. Kind of cool. Oh, I didn't want to miss this slide. This is just like school. This thing is really interesting. All right, so as I told you, I do own an apparel business. So throughout the presentation, there's gonna be a lot of uh, images of me you know really styling some of the, the latest fashion trends and things as you can see this one down here my mom actually sewed on or uh, ironed on my name onto a sweatshirt and actually wore it for my school picture in seventh grade I don't know, really don't know what I was thinking it's so working on my trapper keeper over here and then of course the, the jam box so anyway a lot of fashion stuff going on here eighth grade back up seventh grade I took my very first art class so I went to middle school took art was blown away because at the time I'd always just been the guy that was tracing stuff out of Sports Illustrated, learning how to draw things like that out of magazines. Actually, I had a real teacher now. Okay, they taught me value, they taught me perspective, they taught me how to put a grid on a tiger and then draw it square by square. And I'm like, oh my gosh, look at that. I've got a hundred. Then eighth grade, <laughs> took art again. 
okay? Eighth grade took art again, we're doing still life. I'm just learning all this cool stuff. Really, this was like a huge deal for me. These are really some of the only art teach classes I ever had. Seventh and eighth grade, okay? Learned so much in those classes. And then I took art one when I got to ninth grade, okay? So art one is what I teach now. That's the only art class that I took in high school, art one. Didn't have that great of a teacher then. We were at a new school, you know, it is what it is, but there are other things I learned along the way. Like I said, I was a coach's kid, so I went to high school. My dad was my football coach. So I was the quarterback, I was the free safety, I played football, basketball, and track all four years. So I was kind of like the jock, I guess you could say, but my dad was the coach. Okay, so that's kind of what I did, and that's what I grew up. So I was a sports guy, but I also had a love for art, which in some <coughs> cases is kind of a little bit different deal um, to have those two combinations. So. There's some action photos of me there. Here's one of my claims to fame. That's Shaquille O'Neal. That's me. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping they don't feed me the ball because I'm pretty sure he's going to block my shot. But uh, anyway, they did play against Shaquille O'Neal in high school my junior year. So uh, they beat us by 40. <laughs> they went on to win the state championship, so they beat everybody. So they were 36 and 0. But that was kind of a cool photo, and that was a cool moment in my sports career. I guess in high school we played Shaquille O'Neal. Uh, he bent one of our rims. It was before we had the breakaway rim. <laughs> anyway, but what else I did in sports, or what else I did in high school, I was still drawing. Um, I swear. I used to draw myself, dunking and stuff, you know, before I could dunk, I guess. You know, I, was just, you know, I had nick my, nicknamed myself the Iceman, so it <laughs> looked really cool. My legs were way more muscular than they really were. <laughs> I had a knee brace, I guess, too. But here's what I did. In high school, I latched on my ninth grade year, I took drafting one, okay? And it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me as far as art goes, drafting one. I had this really hard teacher and he would not give hundreds. I mean, we would just work so hard and everything had to be just right. And he'd give you like an 83. I'm like, what's wrong? He's like, well, this line's bent. We just kept, you know, I just, it was a challenge for me, okay? So I just kept like striving to like, I'm gonna show him, I'm gonna get, you know, so that's what I did. That was my high school stuff. I did drafting, like on the right there. As I got older, as I went through the program all four years, I got to where I was drawing oh. stuff like this. Okay, like machine parts. That's like a rotary for, I think, a helicopter, things like this. Um, went to state all four years. I was a state champion in on-site drafting two years in a row. Um, went to nationals all four years. Uh, my sophomore year, I got fourth in the nation with my drafting portfolio that I submitted. Okay, that was out of you know ninth through 12th grade. Um, so that was quite, you know, quite a deal. So this was what I did in high school. I was very technical with my drawing, architectural renderings, uh, engineering drawings, very detailed stuff. We even had a guy my senior year that owned a pool company. He came to our teacher, he's like, do you have any good students that can like design pools for us? And he's like, oh yeah, I got a couple of really good students. So I, did, I designed some pools while I was in high school. Okay, as a senior, so it was pretty cool. So this is what I did. I was a jock, I was sports, and then on my other time I was doing drafting. So I was kind of like the, the drafting guy who also played football and basketball. There we go. And they used to dress us up in these little coats. We'd go to state and everything like that. And then there's a picture of our group that went to nationals at my senior year. Notice the Texas. See, most of were sporting Texas t-shirts, uh, even back in like 1989, so that's kind of cool. But that's kind of gives you a little wrap up on my high school, and kind of what, where, you know, I started from as far as, as that stuff goes with the drawing and things. Well, it's time to go to college. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna be an architect, because that's what I've been doing for four years. Okay, in high school, I took architectural drawing twice, took it the second time because they didn't have another drafting class, so I just took it the second time and didn't even get credit for it. Um, that was all about architecture. I was going to be an architect. I was going to be an engineer, civil engineer. I was going to build all these cool stuff. I always thought it was funny at Texas Tech. This is the architecture building. They would do a better job with the, uh, the architecture of the architecture building, but that's what, that's what it looks like. So I went off to Texas Tech to be an architect. Great, you know, get up there. I was in the architecture program for two years. I enjoyed it, I liked it, I was making decent grades, but it just wasn't like, I felt like in high school we had better facilities. I felt like in high school I was getting better, I don't know, I just wasn't 
It just wasn't my fit. And then I was having that feeling, you know, hey, I need to work with kids, okay? coaching, athletics, like my dad. So I switched majors. So after two years of architecture school, I switched majors and got into geography and physical education. And so I went to get my coaching and teaching uh, degree at Texas Tech after I switched. Um, and here's some of the stuff that I did while I was at Texas Tech. Okay, some of my architectural drawings, you know, some perspective stuff. I also took one art class while I was at Texas Tech, so I was, you know, I kind of got back into, even after I had switched majors, I said, I want to take an art class and kind of still keep that in, um, in my wheelhouse because I still have a love for it. Now, while I was a physical education major, I was still drawing, okay, and my, my art kind of steered back to sports again. So I found myself drawing a lot of sports images and kind of tying them in with some of my architecture stuff that I had learned the last few years before that. So these are some of the drawings that I used to do in early college. Then I kind of started getting on this little Western Texas-y thing um, <laughs> at the end of my college career, because I was still, like I said, into art, but I was kind of like, you know, kind of feeling the West Texas vibes and wanting to do like ranches and cactus and cowboys and cattle and all that kind of stuff. So I started kind of doing some more stuff like this uh, towards the end of my college days. So I graduated college in 1996. That's my little brother. He's three years younger than me. And then that's my little sister. She's 18 years younger than me. So uh, she was kind of surprised. So graduated in 96. I got a job in Dallas. Got married to Carrie. Um, we're actually going to celebrate our 25th anniversary in a couple weeks. Woo! 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 That's 25 years ago when we were really young looking. But I got my first job. After that, so I'm going to be a teacher and a coach. And so I got a job in Garland at Jackson Middle School, straight out of college. Look at me there. I really didn't know what I was getting into. I was trying to be the cool teacher with the uh, pencil over my ear. Uh, that's my little seventh grade football team, the first team that I ever coached. Um, good group of guys. We didn't win too many games, but it was, you know, it was fun. I taught sixth grade history, uh, and I taught eighth grade history. I was not teaching art at the time. But the second year that I was at Jackson, they had an art opening come up. Okay, where they needed someone to fill in a couple sections uh, of art. And so I came in and I actually started teaching drawing and painting. But this is where I had a crazy schedule. I had like sixth grade social studies. I had eighth grade U.S. history. And then I had drawing and painting. And then I had like sixth grade art. So I had all these different classes that I was teaching. I was running all over the building. But I didn't know any better. You know, I was young. I could handle it, I guess. But I got back into art got my first kind of experience teaching art. Because I didn't say, after I graduated, I got my PE degree, I got my history, and my geography certification. I also went ahead and got my art certification at the same time, too, because uh, I loved it so much. And then we came to Frisco. I don't know if I can get it going here. All right, I opened up Clark Middle School. So if you're familiar with Clark Middle School here in Frisco, year 2006. No, excuse me, back it up. Year 2000, we opened up Clark Middle School. There's me and my coaching gear over there looking serious, uh, coaching group. So I was not teaching art. I was at Clark Middle School for six years. I taught Texas history. So now you're kind of seeing the, the balance here. So we got the sports, we got the art. Come to Frisco, I got a coaching job, but I'm not teaching art anymore. I'm teaching Texas history. I taught that for six years uh, at Clark Middle School. So that's another way I kind of, kind of tied back in my uh, you know, art. Now, while I was coaching and while I kind of got back into to Frisco, that's when I kind of started getting back into my artwork that I was doing. And still, I was gravitating towards sports art. So I was doing a lot of like watercolor of some of the Texas Tech players and some of the famous you know, players that come through there. Colored pencil. I was still drawing from Sports Illustrated. This was a photo I saw in Sports Illustrated. I just basically drew it. Okay, it won like a, an award at a little McKinney art show. So it was the first award that I ever won, um, I think, for art, you know, since high school or something like that. I think I got $100. That was kind of cool. Best in show for colored pencil. Then I moved to Liberty High School. Okay. Uh, 2006, I went to Liberty High School. You can see all my badges there. There's one that's missing. I think I just found it the other day on my desk. But 
You can like see the progression there. I've been there a while, okay? Um, I've been there since the school opened. But I got out of coaching. So this was the first year that I hadn't coached. So I coached for 10 full years, go to Liberty High School. Now I'm gonna be just the art teacher. I was the only art teacher to start, the, to start Liberty High School. Uh, my principal was the same principal as Dr. Walter, who's the superintendent now. He was the principal at Liberty. He was the principal at Clark when I was there uh, the last two years, so he brought me along to, uh, to Liberty to start teaching art. Now I'm like, okay, now I'm an art teacher. I don't have to go to practice. I'm not gonna get all sweaty. I don't have to change into my shorts every day and go to all these games and all these practices and stuff. I have more time now to focus on my artwork, okay, and, and find things that I love. So this is kind of when I had my, I guess my rebirth, uh, renaissance time, I guess you could say, when I was really starting to sketch again. I started drawing, getting sketchbooks and taking it to school. And I mean, I'm teaching art, you know, for goodness sake. So like, while the kids are working on stuff, I can sit at my desk and draw, or I can do the project with them. And so it was just really a time that I started to explore doing a lot of my own art um, kind of for the first time in a while. And again, I'm kind of gravitating towards kind of Texas themes, still doing a lot of sports art, a lot of sketches. I started kind of my first experimenting with acrylic paints, kind of on large scale canvas. Uh, and this is gonna be something that I found out that I really, really love, because I really hadn't been a painter um, much before that. But there's some other stuff that I was kind of working on at that time. Blogging. Okay, y'all remember Blogger? Um, I was huge into Blogger. Like, that was my thing. And I still have this. You can get on there right now or whenever after the after words. Junkietrinkets.com. Um, I, I, I think my last post was like in 2015 or 2016. But man, I was steady with the, with the blog for years and years. And it's really cool to look back on because it has a lot of my progress stuff on there. So I would start a painting and I would just show you the progress. Show you the photo that I use. Show you the drawing. All the steps and stages. So that's all still there. Uh, on my Junkie Trinkets blog, uh, but I got really into blogging, and I, it was really cool because I met so many people through the blogging world that followed my blog, and they'd comment on my blog, and I'd comment on theirs, and we'd talk back and forth, and email each other, and share ideas. Started to build that community online. This is kind of when you know the internet was like starting to like kind of figure out what it was going to do, uh, and so blogging for me at that time was a, a really cool outlet where I could kind of share uh, the things that I was doing and interact with other artists that didn't necessarily live in Frisco or anything like that. So um, that's kind of, now you may be wondering about junkie trinkets. That's what my wife called me, or she said something about that one time. Cause I'm a collector. I go to estate sales, I go to garage sales, I go to thrift stores and I buy stuff and I buy collectibles and I have to keep stuff, I sell stuff, I flip stuff, I use stuff for reference. And we were moving, I think, from one apartment to another apartment and she said, what, what are you gonna do with all these junky little trinkets you got? I'm like, ah, oh, junky trinkets, I like that. So that's kind of why I got that name. Anyway, that's also my Twitter handle if you wanna follow me there. All right, this is the kind of stuff I started doing. Motel signs. Okay, I just fell in love with motel signs. So these are some small little watercolor motel signs that I used to do. Small little pieces, experimenting, pen and ink, watercolor, they're quick. I also have a short attention span, so once I get started on something, I have to finish it because almost midway through, I'm already thinking about what I'm gonna do next. I know some of you guys that are artists may have the same problem. I get about halfway through a project and I'm already thinking about the next one. And this one, I'm almost like, all right, I just need to get finished with it or I don't finish it. Um, but motel signs, go back. It became my thing. Okay, this is, this is like two foot by three foot. So I'll just find cool photos or take cool photos of motel signs around the area or on Route 66 to practice and stuff, and I would start to draw and paint motel signs. Okay, these are large scale. Okay, so this is where I came, this is like, this for years and years, I was like the motel sign guy. Okay, so I was really focusing on the Southwest, um, landscapes, and motel signs. Okay, here's one I did for, in hopes that the city of Frisco was gonna buy it for one of the Arts in the Atrium shows. Um, they didn't buy it, but it actually did get put up on the big banner when they opened up the Black Box Theater and the Children's Museum. It was on the outside wall of that on the banner, so it was pretty cool. Now it hangs in a, an office up at the um, administration building on loan. So that was one of my favorite little pieces for Frisco that I did. But more landscapes. So I'm really focusing in on 
my art, my painting. I'm an art teacher. I can do this stuff. I'm teaching this stuff. I felt it felt right. Um, this is really when I got plugged in with the Visual Arts Guild too. This is one of the Visual Arts Guild shows that I did way back in the day when we used to have that gallery way down there. I guess where the courthouse, not the courthouse, but the yeah, that's where you go to like the municipal court mm -hmm. down there by School of Rock. We used to have a little space there that we would have our gallery in. But these are some of the things that I would take. Well, that's a visual art skill show there. Yeah. <coughs> I was getting really plugged into the scene and, and things were starting to happen and I was going to shows and doing some shows in McKinney and some local little art shows and things, uh, starting to sell some of my artwork. And so it was, it was, it was a fun time. Um, no pressure, it was just all kind of for fun. And um, there's a couple other pieces. I also got into collage. I would take old things that I'd find at the state sales, maps, garage, Sales, you know, bank statements, you know, people have old paper and stuff in the state sales, I just buy it all and then make collages with it and stuff and then start doing um, transfers, acrylic transfers and things uh, way back in the day. So I was doing Frisco stuff a long, long time ago on the railroad. Then I found Etsy. Okay, I was one of the first people, well, not one of the first people, but I was an early adopter with Etsy. Um, it was just getting started. Of course, you guys, if you get on Etsy now, just, oh my gosh, it's, it's overwhelming. It's just, it's too much. But when I got on there, you could actually kind of get on there and find some cool stuff and, you know, you weren't getting bombarded with ads and all that kind of stuff. But I started doing some phot photography, okay? So I had a Holga camera that I found and I started doing some cool photography of Texas landmarks and things. And I started selling those on Etsy, this little six by six. Uh, and found some pretty good success with that too. So. I was like taking some of my artwork, but I was trying to figure out a way, how can I make some money from this? I can't do shows every weekend, you know, because I can't produce enough art because I've got to teach and I've got all these things going on. Photography kind of became that deal because I could you know, make a print and then print off like 50 of them and then sell them all individually and for a cheap price and they were easy to, to package and all that kind of stuff. So kind of got into photography and selling it on Etsy. These are some of my dressed up photos that I would do for Etsy. I guess I thought uh, having old beer bottles next to my uh, photos was going to sell them a little bit better. Maybe, but <laughs> I took some of my old Texas stuff and kind of like made these little scenes and things that I would post the, the finished pieces with. Um, it was kind of fun. So I got into Etsy. Painting with a twist. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yes, there's one here in Frisco and I was one of the first people that worked there. Um, I got kind of I found out about it and I was like, huh, painting with a twist, what's that? And uh, someone said, oh, you should go try it out. You're pretty good at painting. So I said, okay, I'll go try it out. And the guy hired me on the spot and I became the Monday night guy at painting with a twist. I probably did that for five or six years. I was the guy who taught every Monday night. $75 a night, not bad. <laughs> and I was taking that money and I was buying my own canvas and I was buying my own art, art. You know, it wasn't money that I needed. It was kind of more considered fun money. So I was able to go to the garage sales and go to buy canvas and go to buy acrylic paints and stuff. And, but all the while I get to paint these beautiful paintings. I paint them with a twist. <laughs> That's kind of supposed to be funny. Um, it wasn't really my thing as far as what I had to paint. I was painting a lot of flowers and wine glasses and sunsets and all these things that I thought were really cheesy. But what it did was it helped my skills, okay? Because I had two hours to teach a class, 20 people, usually women that were drinking wine, um, teach them how to do something and teach them how to paint, okay? So I was getting to use my teaching skills and I was also getting to get better at painting because I was learning how to blend faster and, and get things down and do backgrounds and stuff like that. So. Painting with a Twist has a kind of a little special place for me. I worked there for quite a few years, like I said, almost every Monday night, on the weekends sometimes if they needed my help, but we'll get back to Painting with a Twist here in a minute, but I did that for a few years. All right, here's where we get to the, the stuff. Um, I met Brian Wysong, he was a teacher at Liberty High School. He was the marketing teacher. Uh, that's him and his wife, and that's me and my wife. Uh, we're at Arson, I think we're at a, uh, Art in the Atrium show. Uh, this would have been back probably in 2000 and I want to say 2010, maybe. Um, met Brian, he was a marketing guy at our school. He was a Texas Tech Red Raider. We kind of hit it off, um, started talking. We were sitting in a meeting one day and he saw me sketching 
the meeting must have been really boring. I was sketching and drawing texts and drawing these fun little things. He's like, what are you drawing? I don't know, I was messing around, sketching, went to lunch. He's like, that's really cool. What, is, do you, can you do that? I'm like, yeah. And so he's, so we started talking and he's like, you need to sell those. I'm like, well, I'll try to sell some stuff on Etsy and do some finish. He's like, no, you need to like, you need to sell, you need to start a business. He's like, I'll be your agent. I'll, I'll sell for you. You, you. Your art is awesome. Let, let's do something. What do you, that would look cool on a t-shirt. I'm like, well, yeah, I was actually kind of thinking about doing t-shirts at some point. Because like I said, I'm always kind of thinking about the, you know, something else. And so I was like, are you serious? He's like, I'm serious. He's, like, he's, a, he's a go-getter. He's a pusher. And he pushed me. And so we just kept kind of talking about throwing the idea around. He's like, let's do something. Let's do some t-shirts. Let's take some of your artwork and put it on t-shirts. So we had many a you know, night in the pub, talking, dreaming, talking about all these things that we were gonna do. Um, and so we finally just decided, hey, let's, let's do it. I mean, what do we have to lose? Okay, so we decided to start a t-shirt brand. And we came up with the name Tumbleweed Textiles. Looking back, it's a little long, um, but it fit at the moment, what we were thinking about. We are trying to tie West Texas and then some kind of play on words with textiles and things like that. But we came up with the name, Double T. Double T. We racked our brains trying to come up with logos and how we're going to do the T and the W and all that. How's it going to work? Um, but we finally took that little sketch that I did on that one day in the meeting uh, and we made our first shirt. Okay, we went off to, I put in $350, Brian put in $350, $700 investment. We went and bought 120 shirts of the same design in three different colors. Uh, from some printers in Denton. There were some college kids that were printing out of their garage. Um, and our very first shirt was the Secede shirt. Okay. <laughs> so that was our first big design. Our very first shirt, those are the ones we had. Those are the three color options that you had. The Secede shirt, okay? Mm -hmm. Where are we gonna sell these? We're gonna sell them on Etsy. So we put them on, we had an Etsy shop. We sold some to like my mom and my brother and Brian's mom and sister and some friends. And... But we promoted on Facebook, hey, check out our shirts. A lot of people thought it was cool. Well, once we sold about a third of them, we got our money back. We're like, wow. Okay, we had 120 shirts and we sold like 40 of them. We got our money back. That's pretty cool. What are we going to do with all this money? We invested. Okay, so we had other ideas. So we kept printing and designing more shirts. Okay, we got our very first photo shoot, okay, professional photo shoot. You know, that was, that was pretty good looking. Hillary, Brian's wife's a photographer, so she was able to take our photo shoot for free. That's one of Hillary's friends. So we got models for free, and then we gave them a free shirt. <laughs> so we had our first photo shoot, we had our first shirt, we had our money back, and then we doubled down on this shirt right here, yes. Texas Town shirt. Yes. This is still our most popular shirt. This is the second shirt we ever did. This is a drawing that I did before we even started the company. This was just for fun. I was just drawing it one night, kind of drawing all the towns that I had lived in and then drawing all the rival schools that were around there and all the towns that I remember that had a Texas map and I was just filling in random Texas towns and things in there. And Brian was like, that would look cool on a shirt. I'm like, eh, I don't know, it's a little busy. No, let's do it. Okay, and we did it. It was, a good, it was a good decision. Okay, that became our most popular shirt design. By far. Okay, it still rolls. Now, we do get a lot of uh, complaints about us leaving their towns and stuff off. <laughs> <laughs> what can you do? There's 182 towns on there, I think is what I counted. Um, now, this was another photo sh uh, shoot that we did down, in the, uh, down near the train tracks and stuff. These are some serious looking models back then. Um, but here we go. So now we've got a couple shirts in the bag. We've got some photo shoots under our belt. And we started doing some events. So we're just like slowly just kind of building. We'd sell another third of those shirts, we put it into a new design. We'd sell another third of those shirts, put it into a new design. It was probably about five or six months that we finally decided, hey, it's time to pay back our $350 each. Let's take the initial investment back. We've got a little bit extra and, um, you know, roll with the profit moving on uh, to roll it into uh, to more shirts and things. Uh, the coolest thing was when we finally started selling shirts on Etsy to people that we didn't know. Okay, people from Maine were buying them, or Georgia, or Washington State. Uh, and so people started buying these uh, shirts. You know, there were people that we didn't know. 
uh, that's be that became kind of cool. So you can kind of see early on some of our raggedy uh, setups and things. Um, this was a big mail day back then. You know, we shipped off five or six shirts in a day. It was a big deal. So we were like really super happy about that. Um, and so you know, things are things are going well. You know, it's a good little side hustle for us. Um, things are happening, and um, we're just having a great time with it. Where do I get my ideas? Sketchbooks. I counted last night, I have 15 sketchbooks that I could count. You guys, if you're artists, you know what I'm talking about. Thumbnails, ideas, write them down. So everybody's like, where do you get your ideas? So I, stuff like this, I just start brainstorming. And so that's kind of what I was doing along the way. We were just coming along and coming up with ideas. I draw something at school on a piece of notebook paper. We clean it all up, boom, it's on a shirt. Okay, so. We just started kind of doubling down on designs, adding more things. This is one of my more popular designs. I had this idea at a stop sign. I saw a bike crossing sign. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, those two tires. I could make that an E and an A and write Texas. And I was always looking for something to put Texas in or on. <laughs> and so I saw that. This was one of our most popular shirts at the beginning there too, uh, the Texas bike design. Now this one took a lot of thought. Uh, <laughs> one of our more intricate designs that took uh, years to perfect. Um, no, not really. Um, but this was a very popular design. And like I said, it's, people in Texas are very fanatical about Texas, just like I am. But there's so many proud Texans. And like, you can basically put anything in Texas and the people want to buy it or show it or uh, sport it. So I kind of put this on here. It was kind of really didn't take much to do that one, but we sold quite a few of those and still do. Um, something that simple, funny. Here's one where I did the uh, Texas lakes and rivers. Um, a lot of the good fishing lakes, so kind of like the Texas towns, but we did it in a fish design. Logo, we didn't have a logo until like two years, two or three years into our process. We like, we need a logo. We don't even have anything we can like put on a tag because at the time we weren't making tags. We were just printing them on shirts, and there was no way to tell that it was one of our shirts. Okay, we, we were like, well, we need to figure out a way to people would tell that it was our shirts. So we were like, oh, let's do the cannons, like come and take it cannons, or like the cannons at the Alamo, the Twin Sisters. And so we kind of settled on uh, the tumbleweed textiles, kind of the with the cannons, kind of representing the like the Texas Revolution uh, cannons that they used. So that was kind of the logo that we settled on and there's kind of the, the final color scheme. This is when we really started thinking, hey, we need to brand this, we need to have our colors, we need to get a branding guide and really come up with um, what we're gonna do here and kind of get a little bit more serious about it. Because up until this point, it was just kind of like, yeah, let's print some shirts, we'll go out to McKinney Trade Day, try to sell a few here and there. You know, it was kind of, but it was starting to pick up. Uh, we moved everything from Etsy to a Shopify website. So we have our really own website with a with a, a domain and now we have social media and Instagram and Facebook pages and things. And so we're really starting to push it. We're starting to grow uh, organically and we're starting to build up an email list and we're starting to get fans and followers uh, that we don't know. Way more of people than we did know. So we're like, we need to kind of get serious about this. Influencers played a big role early on too. That's Chet from the Day Tripper. Uh, you may have seen some of his show on PBS, travels all over, the, all over Texas showcasing different towns and stuff. I just tweeted him, okay, on Twitter. I said, hey, Chet, you want to try out one of our, see one of our shirts? Check this out. It's got all the towns on it. And he tweeted me back. He's like, dude, yeah, send me one. I'm like, oh, cool. And so I send him one. And then he buys a couple more. And then next thing I know, he's wearing them on the show. And he's got people asking about them. So it's crazy how some influencers early on kind of helped us spread the word uh, and give us a little credibility. Another person that kind of helped us out along the way is the barbecue snob, okay? Daniel Vaughn, he's the Texas Monthly Barbecue Editor. He was writing a book um, about barbecue joints in Texas. He said, hey, I've seen your Texas towns. Well, actually, we sent him another Twitter deal. I tweeted him and said, hey, you need one of our barbecue shirts. He's like, cool, yeah, send me one. I'm a double X. I'm like, all right. And then he saw some of our other stuff. He saw our Texas town shirt. He's like, hey, I'm doing a book. Can you do a Texas town steal, but do it all the barbecue joints that I'm going to write about in the book? There were 205 of them <laughs> that I had to draw or write in. 
Now, there were hardly any in West Texas. That's why I was able to put the, uh, <laughs> the uh, title of the book over here. But it got really crowded down here near Lockhart in Austin. I was yeah. just like, let's get like the point one uh, micron out. But anyway, we had an ad in Texas Monthly where there's our shirt, you know. So it was part of this deal. So that kind of helped us, you know, get into the barbecue scene. And so Daniel Vaughn has become a friend of ours that we were able to talk to. I'm also a reality TV star. Uh, we had a uh, opportunity where, uh, <laughs> this is really bad, but there was like a really trashy MTV uh, reality show about these girl bartenders at some really kind of weird, well, I don't know, bar over there in Louisville or something. And uh, they were gonna do a shoot at one of our retail locations in Denton. And the owner said, hey, they're coming to shoot and act like they're gonna do like an art show or something or a fashion show and one of the girls wants to wear your tanks, y'all just want to come and be extras in the background. We're like, oh yeah, I guess so. So uh, that's me up in the top, trying to look like, I'm probably thinking like, what am I doing here? It's like, it's like, it's like one of those housewives shows, like they're, they're just fighting the whole time. Like they got, they're all mic'd up, there's cameras everywhere, and the girls were just cat fighting the whole time. But that was me, I was on MTV once, and then there's one of the girls that was wearing one of our tank tops. I think she was about to, I don't know, fight one of those girls, but anyway, <laughs> reality shows. So things kind of started happening. Um, you know, picking up in that department, which was kind of fun. And don't forget painting with a twist. I'm still doing beautiful paintings along the way of sunsets and palm trees. Um, that's still happening. <laughs> then things really start to pick up when we start getting retailers. We didn't realize the whole retail, wholesale stuff uh, until we started having people contact us saying, hey, do y'all sell to stores? We're like, uh, we never really thought of that. And we're like, yeah, I guess so. I guess we can. And so a couple stores started asking us if they wanted to sell, uh, if they could sell our shirts. And we're like, sure. Uh, and so we started selling to a few stores and then a few more and then a few more and a few more. And then uh, it got to be, come to the point where it got a little overwhelming. And this is a picture of, because at the time we were still fulfilling things like out of our houses. This is my office. These are just boxes of shirts all the way down the hallway. Um, I'm trying to package up. This is after school. Like, I'd go to school, work a full day, come home, and be like, oh my gosh, we've got to pack up 300 shirts or 200 shirts to this store or something like that. So I'd stay up, you know, late packing shirts. Brian would stay up late packing shirts. There's days that we would meet at school because he'd have half the shirts, I'd have other half the shirts, and we'd trade in the parking lot. Uh, and then someone would have to go at lunch and drop all these boxes off at the post office. Good problem to have, but it was getting really hectic. So we began to, yeah, here's some examples of just some of our big sale days. Things are starting to pick up, like I said. And so now we're starting to sell a lot of shirts. We're like, we need some help because we're, we're basically uh, getting to the point where we can't handle this anymore. Uh, our printer said, hey, no problem. We'll fulfill for you. So they had a little closet. And so they've, they've started stocking all of our shirts and trying to fulfill all of our orders. Um, that lasted maybe nine months. And they're like, we don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so we're like, okay. So we had to break ties with those guys and we moved to uh, a bigger printer, so we left those printer, that, that, those guys, you know, they were, they were good, they helped us with our start, but it just got to be where it was just too big, it was growing too quick, and we moved uh, to another printer that was able to uh, accommodate the needs that we had. Along the way, we're still doing events, so you can see our setup is getting a little bit better each time, you know, it's kind of getting a little bit bigger, a little bit more professional, we've got like a sign now, uh, little banners and things. It's a little junky still, but uh, it, did the, it did the trick. <laughs> Um, we were starting to meet a lot of people at events. People were starting to wear our shirts to these events. Um, we did some things like Arts in the Square, where we'd set up and sell shirts. Uh, at the same time, I would also set up and sell some of my artwork. So I had like a double booth, I was double dipping. I'd have my t-shirts over here, and then over here I was selling the artwork. Um, so that's kind of the things I was doing back then. That's Frisco Square early on in the Arts in the Square days. Did some other art shows. Um, again, kind of got into collage. So I'm kind of going back and forth between my personal art and then also some of the, the tumbleweed stuff, but um, we're still doing art shows. This is one of the uh, art walk kind of deals that we had in Frisco one year. This is kind of neat. I was housed in one of the landscape um, companies over there. Frisco Mercantile. We finally started saying, hey, we need to get our stuff into like a storefront or something. So Frisco Mercantile was a, was a good, a starter location for us. We've got like a little double booth, hung up all those little pipes and stuff to kind of make it look cool and uh, hung up our shirts and started selling stuff here locally 
at Bristol Mercantile. So we had, a, we had artwork, we could do prints, we did growlers, we started into glassware, hats, all of our shirts, we had our big branded cannons up there. Um, this was some of the early pictures, we definitely cluttered it up with more stuff uh, much later, but these were some of the original pictures of Bristol Mercantile. And we held that spot for quite a few years, right up until we got ready to open up our, our store. Now, getting back with painting with a twist, we're talking about Texas. My boss was like, hey, doing pretty good with that Texas stuff, aren't you? Uh, selling those shirts? I'm like, yeah, yeah. He's like, you think you could do like a cool like Texas uh, painting for our studio? I'm like, yeah, I mean, he's like, I already got a really good idea for you. We're gonna do like barn wood, and then girls, they just love that turquoise, so why don't you put like an L and then make the O, the Texas, and then the V and the E, I'm like, dude, really? He's like, he's like, yeah, man, let's do it. I'm like, okay, so I painted this up. He's like, all right, I'm gonna put it on the website, and we're gonna we're gonna do it like in two two weeks. We're gonna see see how it does. It sold out. Wow. Not only that Saturday, but like he started doing it like every two weeks the same day, <laughs> and they kept they kept coming. I'm telling you, people love Texas. So a painting that I thought was like super cheesy became one of the hottest sellers at Painting with a Swiss during that year. So it was kind of funny. So like I said. I draw Texas stuff, and this is one of the uh, the painting with a twist deal. This is just one of the, I mean, we had to add tables to get all the people that wanted to come do this painting. So around Frisco, there's probably some people that have these hanging up maybe in their garage or their closet or something somewhere. Uh, you never know. But anyway, I thought that was kind of a funny story because I was like, this does not look great. But people wanted it, so whatever. Another one of my... Uh, yeah, I like now that. this took a little more work because I was like, okay, let's make the bottom of Texas into a, like a wine glass. And so people love that one. So it wasn't just wine in Texas. I actually made the bottom look like a, a wine glass. So that one really, that one really <laughs> took off. That was a popular one too. Um, so that was fun to do. That took a little more creativity. Along the way, I just kept designing. Okay, so I just kept coming up. Being a native Texan, I know the things that Texans like the Texas music, the Texas food, uh, the Texas beer, um, just Texas pride type stuff. And so I kind of tried to focus on getting outside, you know, fishing, hunting, exploring, camping. So we kept kind of trying those trends um, and I just kept designing and, and creating things uh, along the way that kind of fit that, that mold. And we kind of got to be, you know, known as kind of like the Texas pride brand of Texas in a way. Uh, people look to us to kind of come up with some unique uh, creative Texas style designs. Retailers, they keep coming. So we're, you know, we have retailers all over the state that continue to buy uh, our shirts. Uh, it continues to grow. Things are really starting to happen. We get asked to get on um, Good Morning Texas. Uh, so we have a TV appearance uh, on Texas Independence Day. We get to share, you know, our, our brand with everyone here in the DFW Metroplex that's, that's not at work uh, on like a random <laughs> Tuesday morning at nine, in, nine o'clock. But, uh, that was fun. So we were actually got to be on TV a couple times uh, with Jane McGarity, you know, Good Morning Texas, that kind of stuff. We did that two years in a row. That was always a fun uh, thing. But like I said, the brand is just really starting to grow at this time. Uh, at this point, um, we've actually started to kind of hire some people to help us a little bit here and there um, at this time uh, because we are getting to a point where it's, it's getting too much. Our events are getting nicer. Look, we've got tablecloths now, wow, a nice branded red tent. So really trying to step up our game and get a little bit more professional um, with that. It just took, you know, it's just kind of like when you start any business, you kind of, you look back at these pictures and they're kind of funny, uh, but you got to start somewhere and just kind of need seeing the progress and it just kind of happens uh, organically. It's just, it's, you know, the right time, uh, things just kind of grow. So we're, all the while, we're still creating new designs. We are still doing events, <coughs> grapevine. Our warehouse has gotten bigger. Okay, this is our new printer. Uh, kind of a look at just a portion of the, the look, the where area where they house our shirts now. Um, we have over probably 300 retailers at any time that are buying our shirts. Uh, we've also got an online web store where people are buying our shirts. And then of course, we've got a stock shirts for our store now. Uh, and events, and so our inventory is basically piling up, um, but we have a little bit more space at the new facility, uh, which we've actually kind of almost run out of uh, again. But as you can see, the growth is, is still there and going. Some more designs that kind of became really popular. Um, 
The native design was a real popular shirt, still is. Texas Chica, kind of a playoff Topo Chico. Um, that's been our biggest seller for probably the last five or six years. Um, we, can put in, we can put that on anything and people love that. So it's a new kind of fun uh, thing. Now, with that, let's see. Oh, well, I don't want to miss this one. With that comes the knockoffs. Um, <laughs> when you start getting uh, your name out there and stuff starts happening, this is our original. This is the knockoff. Mm -hmm. This is our original. This is the knockoff. There, there's my original. There's a knockoff. You know, Tejas Chica. So you start seeing people come up with, hey, I'm going to knock you off or do something <laughs> very, very, very similar. And then when we call you out, you're going to act like you have no idea. Um, this one was in Dillard's. Okay? This is one of our designs that someone randomly found on the internet and proposed that they could you know, sell that design to Dillard's and they printed like thousands of them. Uh, we had to get our attorney to shut it down and then take all of the, you know, get them to take it all down. Uh, this is another one. They just basically ripped off the exact Texas Towns design and they highlighted the town where they were selling these at. So, um, anyway, that was, anyway, that's just one of the things, I guess, that comes with the territory. People say, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, flattering to get imitation that's flattery, but, you know, it's kind of annoying sometimes. But it's just part of the, the deal that we've learned and we just got to get new designs out there and sell as many as we can before someone does try and knock those off. But there's a lot of that going on. And all the while still doing, wow. Sorry. Still doing sketch after sketch after sketch where I get my ideas and just keep coming. I have spreadsheets that I write things down on. I uh, have little thumbnails that I make uh, all the time. Anytime I get an idea, I write it down, jot it down, sketch it out uh, so I don't forget those things. We started doing, you know, artwork that you can frame. So we take some of our designs, people wanted them, you know, so, you know prints that they could frame uh, to put into their house. This here, which, boy, I think we're video. Right. Let's see a video. It may not work though. Um, this is a video of a lot of the shirts that I've designed. Stickers, things like that. So we've, we've got uh, some of our work, we put it on stickers. And then some of the neater things that I've got to experience while doing things, we've been able to work with some neat uh, partners like Whataburger, okay? Like who doesn't love Whataburger in Texas? And Dr. Pepper, so you think about two iconic brands. Uh, we've been blessed to where we've been able to make some connections uh, with those, those folks and do some custom designs uh, for them, um, which is really cool. I mean, that's kind of like the pinnacle of the Texas designers to do something for Whataburger or for Dr. Pepper. So those are really some neat opportunities uh, that we've had to work with. I love barbecue. This is, I got to do a, some of my artwork was on a barbecue label over here, the Rib Whisperer. So I designed his label. That was kind of neat. Um, other things that I've done personally, there's Aaron Watson. He's kind of a big deal in the country music scene. I designed his logo. Again, Texas, AW and logo. He puts it on everything. If you go to his website, like it's on guitar picks, koozies, like and everything. And I didn't get one dime for it. But uh, <laughs> I did it out of the kindness of my heart. It really, it literally took me 10 minutes to draw. I sent it over, he's like, dude, I love this. We'll, we'll promote it and post it and all this stuff. And they, they did a couple posts where they tagged us and stuff. But it's, it's really cool to actually see um, there's something that you've drawn, you know, be used for artists. Old 97s, this is my favorite band of all time mm -hmm. since I moved to Dallas in like 1997. They were like my favorite band ever. And so I just drew something that said old 97s in it. Mm -hmm. And I think I just like shared it on social media. And then I follow them obviously because I go see them all the time. And then I'm looking at their show one day and they <laughs> used it as the background, oh. backdrop. And I'm like, this is like the coolest thing ever. My favorite band stole my design <laughs> <laughs> and put it as their backdrop at one of their shows. And then I reached out to the drummer. I'm like, hey, dude, that's like the coolest thing ever. But can you maybe like make a t-shirt of it? Y'all can sell it. He's like, dude, let's do it. So that ended up being on a t-shirt. And we actually was, I was able to design a couple shirts uh, with the help from some of our designers. Uh, for old 97s, so that was like 
for me, that's like the top. Uh, so that was really cool. So that was some of my artwork. We also do stuff for KHYI, they're a radio station. Uh, so I design all the things uh, for those guys, which is my favorite radio station in the area. Barbecue, like I said, um, our favorite barbecue joints, uh, besides Hutchins, uh, over in Grand Prairie, Zavala's Barbecue, they actually made top 50 this year. Um, I did their Sloppy One um, shirt uh, design. I did their current logo design. Um, and so these are some cool things. That, that Sloppy I, you know, I, I get a still do kind of through Tumbleweed, but kind of as my own personal kind of side projects in a way. Um, but we run through Tumbleweed, but I kind of get some freedom uh, to do some things uh, for certain clients through custom work, which is kind of fun. And there's some of the hats. And then I'm on another barbecue sauce uh, <laughs> bottle, which is neat. We actually sell those at the store. Oh, no, I don't want to forget this one. Someone saw this drawing that I did on Instagram and said, hey, dude, can I make a tattoo of that? And I'm like, yeah, man, go for it. So he took that artwork and he made a tattoo, got a tattoo of one of my drawings, and then he sent me a picture of it. So that's somebody's arm or leg. Uh, <laughs> and I wish I had pictures of other things because I have had other people find some of my drawings on Instagram and they want to do tattoos of them. So. There's kind of, and I've got a really good story you can ask me about afterwards about uh, an open house event at Liberty when one of the parents asked me about the tattoos. It's kind of like, whoa, okay. Now, getting to more present day stuff. Our store down the street, here on Main Street. Um, we kind of got to the point where we're like, hey, we need like a physical location besides Frisco Mercantile. Let's do something. You know, the patios was coming in. We went and talked to Donnie Churchman. He had some space, spaces available. Um, we went ahead and signed a uh, signed to get a spot and we basically built our first retail store. Uh, we were scared to death. We didn't really know what we were doing. We just jumped in um, feet first and just went for it. So um, here's a drawing that I did for a mural. I've got some stickers out front of this actually drawing. This is a drawing I did in my sketchbook. Put it in Photoshop, come up with the colors, and we had a muralist come out and paint it on the wall. So it was kind of cool. So that was the first kind of drawing that I ever did that was small. And you can see how small it was in my sketchbook and then it becomes a big, huge, like uh, 10 foot mural. So that was kind of neat. And that's, that's in our store on the uh, west wall. There's another mural that we designed and did uh, that's on the east wall. And then here's kind of the finished product of the store. If you go back down Main Street, you'll see it on your left. But here's the interior of the store. So. We've gone from those little bitty, you know, McKinney trade days where we got like three shirts hanging, blowing in the wind, you know, and so now we have a retail store uh, 10 years later. Um, truly blessed for, uh, from the support uh, that we've had from the local uh, community and things, but uh, that's our, our retail store. We sell all kinds of good Texas goodies, you know, not, not just t-shirts anymore, t-shirts, hats, artwork, glassware, leather goods, uh, you name it. Uh, it's got Texas stuff uh, that's in there. So it's been a really fun experience building that up um, over the last year. Um, we also have a full-time team now. Um, that's Brian, that's me, that's Brian's wife, Hillary. Uh, she's one of our designers uh, full-time. This is Sharon, she's our customer service. There's my wife, this is McKenna. She's our um, assistant store manager and designer. And this is Katie, our marketing girl. Um, we've also got a full-time store manager. We've also got a full-time um, operations manager that's in, in, um, in Colorado now. We also have two wholesale reps. We've got a team of roughly like 10 to 12 people now uh, that are full-time uh, with the company. Um, so it's crazy. Um, we were blessed the other night to we won Entrepreneurs of the Year for Fiscal. So that was a really cool honor for us. Um, but it's just, you know, it takes a team effort. Like I said, it was Brian and I early on and then we started, you know, getting rid of or giving away, not giving away, but delegating some of the jobs and things to other people uh, to take a load off and, and we've just continued to grow. So it's really been a, a fun ride as far as that goes. So it's got a few more here, I think. Um, back to my personal art. I basically now do whatever my wife wants me to do uh, for her. Um, this is an arrangement uh, ad, it was a magazine. She's like, oh, look cool, Jeb. I like that little moth picture. That's really neat. I mean, this is about this big in an ad. She's like, can you paint that for me? I'm like, okay, I'll try. So here's my version. So I painted a version of the picture I saw in there, and it hangs in our house now. It's kind of cool. Um, 
hey, Jeb, I want a four foot by four foot antler you know, skull head. All right, cool. I like that kind of stuff, so I'm like, I'm all about it. So there's a painting that I did recently. Um, there's another one. Remember the good uh, Garden of Good and Evil? Let's do that, kind of something like that, and then put a crown on it, and this is all collaged and all these different layers of paint. Very cool. We, that was in our, live, our dining room for quite a while, a really neat kind of little painting there. And then we got tired of it. I gessoed over it, painted this a few, uh, a few <laughs> weeks ago. So this is a new painting that I just did recently. It's this one, gessoed over. So if you get real close, you can kind of see some of the texture of that other one. But that's the kind of stuff I'm doing now, okay, that I, when I have time. Uh, outside the t-shirt stuff. Uh, so you do commission work? I do commission work every once in a while. It just depends on the, the situation and the amount of time that I have, for sure. But I'd love to get more into that. Okay, and then I, to wrap things up, I just had a couple little quick points that I just, I, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just a lot about me and I've been talking a while, uh, but kind of sharing my story and then kind of how things have gone. But there's a couple, three points I just kind of wanted to hit at the end just to kind of like share some things that have helped me along the way. Um, community, and I think the first step, like you guys just being here, like the Visual Arts Guild in Frisco, building that community, meeting people. I, I can't tell you how many people we just meet at the store, just random people, and you're like, oh my gosh, that's so cool, and you just make a connection with them, and you start talking to them. The same thing can happen at things like this, the Visual Arts Guild. Online, okay, through Instagram, you start making friends, you start compliment, complimenting on their work, they compliment on your work, you help each other out, you start meeting people. This guy down here on the left, John Flaming, he's like one of my favorite artists of all times. And I just like reached out to him randomly. I'm like, oh dude, I love your stuff. He's like, hey man, yeah, that's cool. We started talking and we started hanging out. I've been over to his house now twice to have dinner and stuff. We went out and took photographs uh, in the <coughs> afternoon. So getting connected with people, you never know what an email, what a text, what a tweet uh, is gonna do. Uh, you'll meet people um, that you know. So make that, Connection, get involved, get social. Same thing I told you with Chet, you know, it was just a tweet. I sent him, hey, you need to wear our shirt, cool. <laughs> now he's a friend of ours, so that's kind of cool. Create stuff for the things that you love. Okay, I found this earlier, I found this out a few years ago. Design, if you're looking to make money maybe, draw and design things that you want to do, like jobs that you want to get. And there's a lot of people that preach this, but like, if you like love, like me, if I love barbecue, then I need to do artwork about barbecue and share it to people that are in the barbecue world. Get your foot in there, okay? So do, you know, do work, even if it's not paid for, just do it to practice it and share it and then you'll know, know what's gonna happen is someone's gonna come to you and say, hey, I saw those barbecue things, can you do that for my little barbecue place? Or, you know, whatever it might be. So that's kind of one thing that I like to share is just like, do stuff that you love. Don't do stuff because someone else want you to do this, but like do something, find your passion, find your, your niche, your niche, I guess you should say, um, and, and kind of stick with that and see what happens, uh, and then share it. And then explore, okay, intentionally go places that inspire your creativity. Like I said, I love going to like antique stores, junking, estate sales. One of these pictures is from the Rose Bowl flea market in LA, it was unbelievable just like taking photos of like cool like fonts and colorways and like patterns and stuff. Like I just build these libraries of images uh, for inspiration. Uh, so get out there and, and like, you know, if it's, you know, if you're a landscape painter, get out there and explore new landscapes, take a ton of photographs. Now I know a lot of you guys know that stuff, but like put yourself in places where you're gonna get inspired. Um, that's just kind of one thing I need to kind of keep in mind uh, and try to do as often as I can. So let's see. And then find your Texas. Um, kind of find the thing, like I said, that, that um, your area that you love. Um, you know, like I said, I have a love for Texas. I kind of just went, went all in with it. Uh, found that other people liked, you know, kind of what I was doing, but there's just so many different areas of things that, um, and communities and things that you can build uh, through your interests and in the things that you love. Um, so this one looks like a tornado, I think. Uh, anyway. That's all I got for you tonight, so I appreciate you guys uh, listening. I know I've kind of rambled for a while, but uh, um, thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Jeff? Do okay. you still have your day jobs? I do. I do still teach at Liberty High School. Oh, okay. Teach 
Well, one good thing is like a lot of our full time, like the day to day stuff of the company, we have other people that are running. Oh, so I am able to go. I am able to go to work, and I still like do a lot of the designs for the shirts and things, but. It's not as like I'm trying to like do customer service and like we got people for all this. So is your wife helping you run the business too, you said? My wife? No, she doesn't. She has a full time job. I have a question. Um, before I, I have two questions. Okay. Before I ask my question, I just want to say that I don't know. This was this was very interesting. Okay. Very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. And I also want to say that I don't know much about copyright, trademark, those kinds of all the legal stuff mm -hmm. with creativity and right. your designs and things like that. You mentioned a couple of things where um, the music, the backdrop for the, for the music concert right. or event, um, that was, you just happened to see it, and you weren't paid for it, it was mm -hmm. whatever. Um, and then the tattoo, they, mm -hmm. someone wanted, saw your Instagram and they wanted to make a, right. a tattoo out of it. So have you thought about um, copyright or trademark, mm -hmm. your design? Copywriting, trademarking, whatever that. Yes, is. we we do we do we do that. Okay. On the on the designs that we think we have a good chance of getting, you know, sometimes they don't they you can't get like a copyright on just like text and things. Mm -hmm. um, that's really going to be hard, you know, like Texas Mama. You know, anybody can say okay. Texas Mama and put it on a shirt, but okay. we did it, and you can copy it, but you know, there's probably not anything we can even do about it, you know, because it's not going it's just text. You know, but some of the things like the beer design, the wine design, like right. you know, some of those ones that are a little bit more unique, the native design, we do have copyrights on. Okay. But that the people don't know that, and they'll still copy it, and then you have to like get Go your attorneys to write a cease right. and desist. Okay. Okay. So. Um, but can, well, that's, that, that's okay. Uh, the, my other question is that you mentioned you were in retail stores. Now you have your own retail store. What other retail stores are you selling your t-shirts from? Uh, um, well, there's a tons of like boutiques, like in little towns. Okay that sell our stuff, but some of the bigger retail stores that you may have heard of are like, you know, Tyler's, uh, Bucky's, we just got into Bucky's, oh, which is a big deal. Um, uh, we're in, we used to be in the Buckle at the mall. Um, Rally House um, does our stuff. Uh, Cavender's Boots, um, those are some of the bigger ones um, that I think you would recognize, but like a lot of like smaller boutiques, like in New Bronx, like, you know, like towns, like touristy towns, like Fredericksburg, Bernie, New Braunfels, Jefferson, Texas. A lot of those towns have like small like boutiques that are pretty big that go through a lot of shirts. Aren't so. you in the, the Shields? Shield yes, yeah, we're in Shields too at the in the colony. Yeah. In the sports store, I saw your little office you guys. Like. Yeah, that was kind of cool. I had the same question. Oh, you had the same question. Like, are you still a teacher and still I am. doing this? Okay. Yeah, I'll be at school tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> I was really curious about because my wife, you know, like, she's into detail. Designs, you know, artists, unique, unique designs. Like, for instance, when you saw your art being pretty much plagiarized, I mean, from Dillard's, mm -hmm. what is your, I mean, I can understand someone asking your permission, that's totally different. But, like, you can see that, like, oh, wait a minute, that's mine. It's a, a bad knockoff of my design. What kind of, uh, I mean, can you tell me the process of what you do from the other end? Because my wife's at the end where, you know, that's the original art design, and you know, you look at different things right. and you try not to copy, but right. sometimes. People blatantly copy. It, it's all to the detail. What, what are your kind of uh, remedies for that? Like, give me the dealers as an example. Okay, so for the dealers, for example, like, you know, my friends like text me a picture. He's like, dude, this, yeah. this guy ripped you off. I'm like, what? <laughs> so like, I think the next night we went to Dillard's. I'm like, sure enough. Oh my gosh, it just racks of these yeah. things. And uh, so like, okay, so we called our attorney, sent the photos. You know, he then from there they took it so the attorney like found out the dealers and it was it's a long process it's a headache uh, but they eventually were able to find out kind of some like junior designer yeah, that like said sure. that they had found it and they sold it to whatever yeah brand it was that was doing that and they didn't know it was they thought this girl came up with it they didn't realize she just found it on instagram yeah. so they ended up taking them all down we didn't get any money from it they just we just they just had them stop Sales because okay. I think they just put them on, but they, they took down. So, you don't, so any sales they make of that because that could have been there for months and you don't get that, you mm -hmm. just get them to stop and that's good. It's stuff. more, I guess, it's more how much do you want to fight it? Kind of oh, okay, so it's like um, it's too small. I mean, Dill is, I mean, it's like at that point, right. I mean, but it's just, it's, yeah. it's just one of those things we want to keep messing with. I mean, it's just taking up time. We just get them to take them off and you stop happy. selling them. We're happy enough. Okay, to go okay. So, as far so as that, you, how often do you run across that? You probably do it. It's not. 
those are the two bigger examples, yeah. the ones that I showed. I mean, it, 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 seriously, if you go on Etsy and you type in like Texas wine, there's so many people that are knocking them off. And, and I'll send them letters or messages, but it's like, and then you have to send them like, it's just, it just takes time. It's like you just, can just keep fighting it. But, but it's your design, so you fight it to try to get as rid of it. So you can hire someone just to do that. <laughs> yes. it, it's gotten a little bit better, but there's, there's a lot of time. Yeah. Jeff, uh, related to that, talk to us a little bit about what the company is doing now. How many t-shirts a year? What's the, uh, you know, we, we started